it was bad. He got that bad on Illy Kamiz. Oh, really? My addiction came into place. I've, I've always had addictive genes. So whatever I do, I, I do to the best of my ability. Yeah. But sometimes that's at the detriment of my mental health, basically. So so I've got a lot of past trauma from both. I don't I don't call him my dad, but I will for this all sake of purposes. My dad, then my stepdad. Um, and, and I look back and I just think, what a... Because what I was trying to do was portray an image that wasn't me. <laughs> Not you. But yeah, like, yeah. I wanted people, like, I wanted people to go, you know that from school that was never going to amount to anything? Look at him, he's wearing a Canada Goose on an A-class Merc, like... And what, what was the, the lead into that then? The drink, mate, I think. Is that what it was? Yeah, w- think... Was it guilt, the guilt side of it, or...? So we're back again, Trade Legends, Season 8, God knows what episode, and we have another fantastic guest. Are you the first, is he the first official screeder? The one and only. Standout screeder. Yeah, yeah baby. Um, I, think I can't are. think of one. Screed Pappy, a.k.a. Screed Pappy. Joe. Joe. Big Joe. Big fan. First, first screeder. So, as you are the first one, yeah. just to know this is going to be really basic and most people will know what a screeder is, but just give us a little backstory as to what it is, what it entails, and then what we will do, we will take you back to sort of, you know, when you're leaving school, how did you come to be getting into what you did? Yeah. And then how you sort of progress to here. So just give us a little bit of what it is that you do yeah. and what the job entails for anybody that's listening and watching. So basically we offer a one-stop shop for a builder. So we do concrete footings, concrete floor slabs, insulation, underfloor heating, and then we go on top with the liquid screed. So it's not just the screed that we do. Um, but yeah, basically liquid screed is it's grown more and more over the over the last few years. So a lot of people still installing traditional screed, but it's designed to go over the top of underfloor heating because it encases the pipes better, uh, okay. gives you better thermal conductivity and stuff. So yeah, but there's a lot of benefits to it really. Yeah. And you also lay the underfloor heating as well. Yeah. A lot of, <laughs> I find a lot of screeders now do that. A couple of builders that I work for, I'll put the price in for the underfloor heating and they'll go, oh, the screeders are going to come in, smash mm-hmm. that out and that yeah yeah so we normally do like a, if we're doing a full install so we'll install the footings and they get obviously the block work up yeah get it re- relatively high up to roof height then we'll go back and do the floor slab and then they get watertight and then we'll go back in then and do the insulation and the floor heating and screed then so yeah, yeah it's it it's part and parcel of the job really for me it was about marketing the business and how we can offer a one-stop shop for the builder really so so do you just bring the, the tails out? You don't connect them into the manifold? So we pipe to manifold oh, right. and then we leave the manifold pressure tested. Yeah. And then obviously the, the plumber comes along and then does all that connection then to, yeah, the, yeah. to the boiler or air source heat pump as we go in now. So In other words, it makes it nice and easy for you, man. Well, Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, others could say, just takes the cream. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Under <laughs> 100%. People, <laughs> think, the cream. people think underfloor heating is like... <clears throat> it's not hard, It's mate. not hard, no, is it? No, no, no. But, but when, you know... When Rupert goes to the golf club and says, oh, I've had underfloor heating put in the kitchen, it sounds yeah, it impressive. Does, yeah. but I mean, as some of the jobs, Who do you know called Rupert? No one, but the, that's, the guy, that's always the guy at the golf club, <laughs> like Tarquin and Rupert are going for nine Tarquin. hours. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of the time, the thing, like, we see it certainly like, oh yeah, so-and-so, well, I'm going to do the underfloor heating myself. So it's unregulated. Yeah. So you haven't got to be qualified to do it. Yeah. And a lot of the time we turn up and whilst it's not difficult it is it, it, it can become more technical yeah. so obviously if it's running off an air source heat pump like zonage yeah obviously like actuators things like that there's different st- uh, like thermostats coming out now that can read the floor temperature through infrared and stuff because one thing I've always like my mind's always been boggled by is obviously a lot of people have tiles because it yeah. heats up more but then you know the different types of materials that you have on mm. floors like how do you know what what's going to be best to put down or... Yeah. So you know, there's... Uh, when we're installing, we obviously some, go through... Somebody, somebody like me who's got absolutely zero yeah, yeah, idea. Yeah. So like, we go through at the, at the point of quoting, we will always quote off plan from the from the builder or the customer. And then we always ask what finished floor they're having on. Mm-hmm. So at that point, you can either install like a floor pro, which reads the temperature of the floor, or obviously these stats that have just been released now by our supplier, they're infrared stats. And they point obviously down to the ground and read the floor temperature because can't from the stat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got infrared from the stat, so it can be wireless or wired. Yeah, and it just points down and reads the floor temperature because candine can't be heated above twenty seven degrees, otherwise it starts lifting. Because this is this is what I was going to say. Is obviously you've got to try and choose the correct flooring to go. Which some people they just put the underfloor heating down and then not even think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where I'd probably go. Yeah, let's have Cardine babes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Which you can do, <laughs> but you're never going to be able to get that to its full potential. Yeah. Reading the ambient temperature of the room as opposed to the floor. Yeah. 
I mean, what other things then for somebody like me that doesn't really know too much about it? Because obviously you install underfloor heating, yeah. don't you? And you're obviously doing it. What other things would you suggest to somebody to look out for or to investigate first before you even go ahead with getting So heat them? source is a massive thing. So obviously with air source heat pumps and that coming in now, the centres on the pipe have got to be tighter. So obviously if it's running from a boiler, you can get a bit more of water flow through yep. the pipe basically so you can have like a 200 centre because if it's going off an air source heat pump it's got to be closer so normally like 150s mm. but obviously it depends and on like you've got to take all sorts of, into account so high ceilings where there's a lot of glass in the room you know like people are having big bifolds in lantern roofs and stuff like that so mm. many like, so many different yeah. do, things that have a uh, have an effect on do, it do people still have normal rads alongside underfloor heating or is it just you tend to f sometimes <clears throat> it's either you'll have full underfloor heating everywhere if it's a complete re rebuild or, or whatever or new because how, how do people or they'll have rads upstairs and yeah, underfloor heating downstairs yeah because yeah. how do people like I suppose a new build obviously it's easier to put underfloor heating upstairs but how would some can anybody retrofit any, you, you any can, stuff you like can, yeah. with floorboards yeah and, you can you can do like an 18 mil or a 16 mil overboarding like yeah underfloor heating upstairs so yeah. you, all the worst case scenario you might have to lift your skirting or do your doors but it's really thin sort of profile and it still gives the heat out and that's on floorboards that goes on top of floorboards yeah. there's also like there's loads of different options now so the supplier i use called roth they're, they're like leaders in the marketplace basically for it and they do joist hangers so you can yeah. lift the floorboards yeah. nogging out and then you can get your return back through the pipe so they sit uh, in line with your with your joists and then you can put your floor in over the top i think because that was but, a big thing a few years ago <clears throat> everyone wanted it retrofitting. Mm. And back then it was a case of, if you want it downstairs, you've got to chop all your floors out, yeah. re-screed your floors to have it. But now they've brought out the overboarding yeah, or like yeah. say the joist hanging version. Castellated mm. systems as well. So if you've got like a low profile that you want to do downstairs, but you don't want to dig the concrete out and you can afford to gain like sort of 30, 40 millisecreed on top, mm. you can use a castellated system I, as well. I, I had this conversation with you, didn't I, about underfloor heat. Yeah. And I, like you read so many people that are really happy with it and then you get read some people, people don't understand yeah. how to run it and also some people say that they have it and it makes them feel sick when they're on it have really? you ever read that yeah, no. yeah. so when they're actually like, that's because they've got to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> probably cheaper than red ears I, I, was, I was reading somewhere on like a forum where there's some people where they're walking on it and I don't know why whether it's just because obviously the heat's coming up from that way that it actually makes them feel sick and they've had to rip it out of the house Really? Wow. I don't know whether there's like a slight, yeah, yeah. slight condition. Nausea, like nausea thing. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it is, your contact point to the floor is your feet. So as soon as your feet are warm, it's like when you're in bed. Yeah, if you're yeah, up, yeah. you put your feet out of the duvet. 100%. And it cools you down. So you've got your feet on the floor, that contact point, straight away you're, you're hot. Hot air rises as well, mm. whereas rads in effect are heating the top half of the room first and mm. coming down. So you've got... You know, six foot or four foot of, of yeah. wasted heat. Because the other one was, I remember it was on Dragon's Den, but I think the guy I never got the, the, the skirting, skirting, board, the skirting board. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah. I've never got my head around it. No. Like, I, I can, just, I can how it can I, heat a room. I can yeah. understand why people do it, but then some of the fascias that go over it, yeah. it just looks really shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're like plastic mean? crap. It's like, uh, like, like you know, if conduit. If it was in an office, if it was in an office, you know, like yeah. you've renovated yeah, yeah. an office or something like that. But again, how effective are these? It's just yeah. like with the size of people's houses now as well, like the kind of installs that we're doing, we're doing them in like high end properties. Yeah. If you've got like a 60, 70 square meter room, mm. how is that going to be effective? And yeah. you're scaling on the perimeter, like you might get a little bit of heat four foot into the room. Yeah, if just that. find everyone just gathering by the one side of the room. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's why Dragon's Den. Told yeah. him no thanks. Yeah. See you, mate. I mean the other the other thing as well is from my perspective, this is just me putting it out there. What are the things that can go wrong with underfloor heating? There's obviously you know leaks which can happen. Mm. Generally speaking, so we will always install the underfloor heating and then we'll pressure pressurize the system just to make sure there's none of that going on. Mm. We always install new reels so we don't use offcuts just in case it's been how damaged. How long does it last? So they say. The suppliers will say anything underground, aka the, the, the pipe work, is a lifetime guarantee. So 50 years they state. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to live 50 years, to be honest. But. <laughs> You're right. It is a, you know, that's, I, that's... I've, I, the, I think the first ones I put in were like 20 odd years ago. Mm. Mm. Yeah, changed my number since then. Never, <laughs> yeah. never had a call back. Looks all right from my house. <laughs> that line, that line in the building trade is, I love it, <clears> but it Pisses me yeah. off. I can't see it from. It looks fine from my house. I'm like, really? Cowboy Central, <laughs> but, it, but it's it's so sad. Yeah. I've just checked it on my phone and everything's like a beep beep beep. beep, beep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what's the other one? 
Um, uh, how long is your guarantee? Till the end of the drive, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. But yeah, so there are a lot of things that can go wrong, but then anything above ground, aka you like your thermostats and your manifold and stuff, mm. normally two years. Yeah. Obviously each supplier is different, but ours is like two years above ground, lifetime, 50 years underground. Mm. And then also when you're putting like, from my side, obviously it's not your side, but when you're filling that system up and you, you're having to put inhibitor in, you've got to use biocide because, because underfloor heating temperatures are lower, the inhibitor working point is going to be lower, so we have to use a different inhibitor for yeah, underfloor okay. heating than right, rad, okay. rad systems. I don't know what point it up like that. It's like Ryland from what was it? Pop stars. Yeah. Upstairs. <laughs> I've, I've got his teeth anyway. Oh yeah, we're yeah, still, we'll get in there. Mm. Um, but yeah, underfloor heating. So yeah, you do a lot of underfloor heating. Yeah. But then like the screed side of stuff. Yeah. Um, have you found that is completely changing, like you say, with the, the liquid yeah, screed in Massively, now, yeah. I think obviously Traditional still got its place, so I've is, got is a guy. Is it quicker as well to liquid screen? It's a lot quicker, yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot quicker. So I can be in and out of an average size job in like two to three hours, mm. maximum really. Whereas before? Traditional, you're there for like a good half a day to a day really. On your hands and knees. Yeah, mate, it's hard graft. Yeah. But I've got a guy, um, basically he does traditional, I do liquid, and we just pass jobs to each other. Oh, okay. A bit of a networking thing. So if I, you know, I had one the other week where they wanted me to do a patio, well, liquid screen can't be installed outside, it's got to be in a watertight property. Right. And they needed to achieve a fall for the patio. So he then went and installed the traditional street right. screen outside so that they could achieve the fall and it was hard wearing as well, so... It's still got its place in, in, in the construction industry, but I think it's becoming... Less and less. Yeah. It's evolution, isn't it? Everything just moves along. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, like I said before, the liquid screen encases the pipes completely because it's completely surrounding it. Mm. Whereas traditional, you can get like little air pockets and stuff around the pipes. So, And then you get, when you're filling the underfloor heating up, you've got to slowly up the temperature little by That's little. That's it, yeah, yeah. So three to five degrees a day we recommend yeah. to sort of basically commission the floor. Yeah, so you don't get massive cracks yeah. and in it. And then the same again when they're going to lay the floor, so whether it be candine or tiles, they need to turn it off, let it cool down. Mm. And then the same to, to basically commission the floor in then. Yeah. I've <laughs> had it when you do a bill for someone and, the, and you've got to get to that point where you turn it on and the builder goes, oh, we ain't got time for that, just ramp it up. I'm like, not a chance, mate. Dehumidifiers these, these, is the other yeah, one. Yeah. These, these are good things because somebody like me, I'll, you'd never. And if your builder or your contractor mm. didn't actually tell you these things, and you, yeah, you'd be, you'd be fuming because yeah. it's not, it's not a cheap install, is it? It's no. not. No. And like you said, it's not common knowledge. Like people, and like, you know, it's not particularly a new thing. But people don't, you know, they might research Google, but as mm. we all know, Google tells you loads of different things, and yeah. half of it's not true. Yeah. Um, you know, we say when we, at the point of install, you know, we kind of reel off a script, if you like, to say, look, this is what you need to do. This is the aftercare. Mm. We always go back and grind the floor as well. So it's got a latent on it and hydride screed that if you don't remove that latent and give the floor a key, you can't adhere anything to it. Oh, okay. And it also helps the drying time as well. So there's a lot of aftercare and stuff. But like you said, if people aren't aware mm. and they just go crunk, yeah. I, like I said to you just now about yeah. the dehumidifiers, people go, am I right to put a dehumidifier out? I'm in a rush to put the floor down. I'm like, if you want crack floor, then yeah, crack on. Like, yeah. It's only going to pull the you moisture have, out quicker than it needs to, to happen. Leave, you have to leave it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It if you want it done right. Because I, I've had it where my tile has gone to floors and, and they haven't keyed it. And oh, you can just tile on that. It's fine. No, we've got to rip it all down, get the stone, right. stone blocks out. That's when they start sticking the tiles on three days after it's made. Yeah. And, and, then, and then six months later, you go in there and it's... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we went and so someone had removed a load of tiles. We got a phone call. Can you come and sand the floor? You haven't installed the screed, but we need it sanded. And the floor guy's not going to do it, and the screeders aren't going to do it, and blah blah blah. I was just like, it's a bit weird. Went there, and all of her tiles that she'd spent thousands of pounds on were out the front of a house, all cracked. The grout had cracked, they'd lifted oh, and popped. It's just like it, 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 it's something that's so simple. Like, it's almost like a follow-on process. It's like, right, we're going to install that screen on Monday. In seven to ten days, we can go back. So I'm, I include it in all of my prices yeah. and say, in seven to ten days, we'll come back and remove the latents for you. Mm. You know, it's, Go it's, back it's, and then the full, full tiles have gone down. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. told you, mate. Mate, honestly, you do get it. Yeah. And I get it. Like, people are in a, you know, a rush, aren't they, time scales with builds and stuff like that. But the build and end doors, like, you're going to spend more money in the long run because mm. you haven't done the job properly. Well, how much did it cost to replace all those tiles? Oh, mate. I dread to think because they were big, like they were like 600 no, no, by 600. Normally, well, like, like you have underfloor heating and it's in that sort of big open plan living space on yeah. the back of a house, isn't it? Yeah. That tends to be where yeah. it is. And they're 
quite big extensions yeah, yeah, yeah. on the back of somebody's and floor's not cheap no. you know like tiles candy and it's all expensive stuff and if all that's got to come up I had that in the old house oh. <laughs> Mrs. gave me the bill I was like what the what the, what the, what the? Oh, <laughs> mate, we're not ridiculous. having that in the new one like. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I haven't done Robin, anything click laminate babe like, <laughs> yeah click laminate oh god so. Keep, uh, you can treat yourself you have some thick underlay in this one <laughs> So, I mean, you give us a, a brief sort of like intro as to, to what it is, which is quite interesting for me because, you know, obviously Mark does it, but I have zero idea on stuff like that. I find it really interesting. Just take us back then to when you got into sort of what you were doing, like 16. Were you, you know, I'm really going to make you laugh now when you ask me this question. It's like worked in a call centre or something. No, but yeah. like everybody's, I, I always Worth. I always feel like, <laughs> Brilliant. No, but I always feel on this show, because one, one of the reasons why I started it was I'm always interested in, yes, we see your work on mm. social media and that's great, but sort of when you give people the backstory, people go, oh, actually, like I, I didn't yeah, know that yeah, bit yeah. and it's, it's quite interesting to see your progression to, mm. to where you are. Occasionally we get the... Well, my dad was a carpenter. I was a carpenter, and no, was, mine's black was, and white. Like my son's a carpenter. Different. Do you know what I mean? But it just it it always gives context to sort of yeah yeah. When people are looking at your social media, then they think, oh, actually, yeah, because people build a bit of a, a, a perception, don't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, they, I, I assume that guy was like that from day one. Yeah. And when someone comes out with something massively, I most certainly was not. Can't wait for this. It's nothing really exciting, but... We've helped like, it up. Sorry, yeah, 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 like porn star. Sign up as a porn star. Porn star, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a geography teacher. I got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> geography teacher, yeah, yeah. I'd probably make a better geography teacher than a porn star, if I'm honest, but we won't get into that. <laughs> so go on then. So I wasn't academic at school. I was I was bright, but never applied myself. I was always the one to be the class clown and stuff like that. Sound, sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. I always got told by... A handful of teachers, majority of them, must I'd never try make harder. It. Yeah, Are you mate. the good must try yeah, harder guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my form tutor always used to say to my mum, like my mum, basically my mum used to drop me off at school, and she'd always get a phone. Like when she got a phone call before she opened the door, she knew it was school. Right. Either I hadn't gone in or I'd done something naughty or blah blah blah. So I wasn't really academic in that aspect. I was bright, but I just didn't apply myself. And I always knew this is a shock now that I wanted to be in food. Okay. So. As like everyone has their little dream of I want to do this, I want to do that. I always wanted a restaurant in Spain on the seafront, blah blah blah. blah. So when I was at school, the only lesson I applied myself to was food technology. Yeah. And the teacher at the, at the time, I was working a part time job, and I was like learning everything from scratch, cooking. Like my my head chef was phenomenal, and I used to go into school and I was like making like baked Alaska apple pie, you know, like all the basic yeah. stuff, like. Yeah. And she used to say to my mum, like, oh, he's never going to make it in the industry, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward, we will get back to it, but fast forward, probably like 12 years. Got Rick Stein in there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not so gangster. Um, but then I opened my own business and I got a letter from the same teacher asking a pupil to come and do work experience really? in my business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Which was like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for him to go uh, like, Big Joe's fish and chips. Smoky Joe's, baby. <laughs> Smoky, Smoky Joe's. Joe's. <laughs> No, so I, I, when I when I left school, obviously I was I was already in the food industry anyway, working a part time job, mm. and I went to go to college. But again, wasn't academic, didn't get on with it. It was yep. again teaching the basics of, of of like culinary skills. So I reduced. I got I went in the same kitchen. I got a full time job there and went to college one day a week just to do the practice, the theory side, um, and then uh, yeah, just started working there, worked my way up to head chef, and then decided to clear off to Malia. Did a season in Malia. That was entertaining. Um, but there's some seasoning going on in the, yeah, in the food there. He, he got the Malia mate. flu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that, mate. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was amazing. So I split up with my girlfriend at the time. Went out there. <laughs> I thought right, you were going right. to say you split up with your girlfriend whilst you were in Malia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. The reason for me going was I wrote my car off and had a payout from my car. And I was like... Oh, I don't want to be here anymore. Uh, Malia. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Malia. Literally, it was like the scene from the in-between as well. It was class. So it was like me and my girlfriend were working out anyway. So I cleared off to Malia. <laughs> I love that. She came out to see me. One I'd thing moved to on. another. <laughs> I'd moved yeah, on. basically, yeah, yeah. Uh, with Manuel. <laughs> Shirley Valentine. He drove there. a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely didn't. No way. God, who'd do that? <laughs> so yeah, so I went out there and then I, I literally I came back at the end of the season and... My ex-girlfriend was at my mum's house and my mum said, you need to come in and sit down. And I was like, 
fuck. She's I don't know what's happened here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was pregnant and I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Like, we're just going to, you know, we're going to roll with it and whatever. Um, we're, now, now he's no, done Mario. I thought he was going to go. It wasn't me. <laughs> it's not yeah, mine. Was, <laughs> it's not uh, mine. Yeah, yeah. So like basically, yeah, it was no. just like I need to like I need to sort my shit out now because I've got another responsibility. Yeah. So that that's when I opened the shop. Then so there's a little shop come available in the local village where I lived and opened this like farm shop, delicatessen, fruit and veg. Then one thing led to another. I started doing outside catering, so I was doing pig roasts, not spit roasts. <laughs> and that was in Malibu. Yeah. <laughs> Before you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just been doing pig roasts. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, that like all like kind of blew out of proportion. I bet that was quite good though, wasn't it? That was Mate, a thing, I, weren't it? How, yeah, so how long yeah. ago would that have been? So, oh, crikey. So I remember loads. He's like, that shit, I don't want to say, because I'll give me age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but that was a thing, wasn't it? Everyone, all of a sudden, everyone was doing pig roasts. Yeah, and mate. Street was, food. Yeah. It was big. Before. So this was kind of before the real street food had come in. Yeah. So it was like, you know, like weddings, That's things it. like that. Like, obviously, going out and doing, and do, we do buffets. We used to set up kitchens in marquees and do like like four to five course meals. Oh, right, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then I used to do some private dining and stuff. So I'd go to people's house and just cook like intimate for like two or three people. Um, so yeah, sounds like, like you really enjoyed it though, mate. I lo like it was my passion. I, I still love cooking. What's your special? But, oh, everyone asks me this, like, and it's really bad because it's lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> like, but if, if a if a woman likes uh, Italian food, mate. Just so, but really? I do a really good lasagna. It's like beef shin, pulled beef shin oh. lasagna. It's like, yeah. Got a oh, twinge on real, mate. I'm real. But yeah, so obviously that's where I was at. And then I, I left the shop. So I sold the shop. Me and my wife were both, well, we weren't husband and wife at the time, but we basically... Um, so it was a concern, a going concern? Yeah, basically, because oh, okay. we were both So I've done it right then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was like, it, it, the butcher basically bought it off me. Right. Um, and then I, I, I fell into sales. So started doing sales, selling food, um, worked my way up in a small independent company. And then that that company, then I got headhunted by a multinational, went to go and work for them for like a couple of years and then COVID struck. Okay. So oh, so it's been yeah, yeah. a big thing then. Yeah, mate. It's like li literally I was at school right the way through to like probably what? I would say years, like, four, yeah, uh, yeah, like oh, probably three, when COVID was. three four was it years ago. 21. Was it 21? 20. Is it 20? It's that long ago, mate. Is it? Four yeah. years. There you go. So four years, yeah. 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 It, literally feel, 20, it literally feels like somebody's pressed the fast forward button since COVID. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it, gone like that. It has. For sure. Yeah. Four years, mate. So, yeah. So, Five years in March next year. Is it? Mm. Mate, it's crazy. <laughs> All that's happened is I've got more, more, more dead bod and grey hair. Yeah. That's it. And no sleep. Yeah. But yeah, so COVID came along. I was looking after education and ho and hospitals, so NHS. Those were my two sort of biggest sectors I was looking after. And obviously, like everything during COVID, just went vroom. Yeah. But they still wanted the, the, the sales to come through, basically, and it just wasn't possible. There was no visitors in the hospitals. Like, patient feed was down to a minimum. Mm. Like, it, it was just non-negotiable there wasn't anyone I could have gone and give the stuff away and it still couldn't have sold it like so uh, that's when I started my got him to blame for hospital food yeah basically yeah, <laughs> yeah, your yeah. Fault. my fault yeah 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 100% my fault yeah <laughs> but um, yeah so like that's when my addiction came into place I've, I've always had addictive genes so whatever I do I, I do to the best of my ability yeah but sometimes that's at the detriment of my mental health basically so um I like going to the gym I enjoy working out it's my medicine now um I haven't drank for three years because basically my life was completely screwed man I was doing like a bottle of spice from a day oh yeah 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 so what was the catalyst in that then I was think that, was that because of COVID? Was this during or was this before? I think I've always had a problem relationship with alcohol, to be honest with you. So I grew up around an alcoholic, my mum's fella, so my stepdad was an but, alcoholic. But, but I, I always think as well, the Brits, however much we don't want to admit it, there is a bit of a culture of... 100%. Drinking culture. You know, like fo the football yeah, yeah. comes on. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's in a beer garden. Yeah. You know, it's it's just an automatic reaction. The sun comes yeah. out. It's habitual. I, I it's like, like my missus... Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say if my missus was had a problem by any stretch of imagination, <laughs> but she did. Like six, she did six months. Like I don't want to drink for six months, just as yeah, a bit of a yeah. detox. And she said, being the out, looking from the outside in, she read a book on something. But and you'll probably relate to this, Joe. Is um, 
Everything is rewarded. Oh, you've you passed your driving test. Let's go and have a drink and celebrate. Yeah, a bit true. You know, and then if you don't, if you go out and don't drink, you're the fucking bad one. Do you mean you're not drinking? Yeah. Go on, have a drink. And when you don't, people always go on. One won't hurt. I don't want one. Been there, mate, and lost friends because of it. Do you yeah. know what? So alcohol. And this is how I used to explain it to my friends when I first sort of stopped drinking. So I carried on going to the pub. But I'd just drink zero beer or I'd just drink well, that's, a. That's beer. difficult in itself. Mate, you, it was. You know, like when you try and stop smoking. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, the thing with me is I then, in flip it, I was addicted to not being addicted, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I'd still go to the pub because I thought if I can go to the pub and I can't and I won't drink, you've cracked I, it. I've yeah. cracked it mm. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, when I used to say to him, I used to say, if I was stood here and saying you were offering me like, shoot up with heroin yeah. and I said no would you call me a weirdo yeah yeah like it's the only go on, drug yeah, go yeah, yeah. On. you wouldn't do it yeah, yeah it's yeah. the only drug that's unacceptable not to do yeah. in front of people yeah like you know it's, and it's legal yeah 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 and it's the probably one of the most dangerous what was heroin like, no having, oh, a, having just a drink like, see how excited he got then <laughs> he was like <laughs> Is it really? Is Where's it? the belt? No, bro, I just did you say heroin? I was like, excuse me, can I chase the dragon, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, okay, sorry, my bad. Yeah, dad. yeah. <laughs> Drink. But sorry. it's just like, it, and, it, and it is, and I, it, the more you step away from it, the more you see the effects it has yeah. on people. And like, listen, I'm not one to preach. If you want to have a beer, have a beer. And I think that's great. If you can do it in a controlled environment, I can't. I definitely had a bad relationship with alcohol. Mm. Definitely. And like, you've been clean for how long? Like clean? Is that the right terminology? Yeah, clean. yeah, yeah. Hundred percent, mate. Yeah, for yeah. three years. Yeah, three years. So it'll be August the seventeenth of three years. So there was a turning point for me, which is really weird. I went down to Boardmasters in Newquay yeah. to work alongside a friend of mine who's got a mental health charity, but he does it through music. So one of his friends took his own life basically, mm. um, and he, he, I think, the album cover of one of his albums was a hummingbird. So my mates created this brand now, We Are Hummingbird. Right. Um, and he just goes to festivals and like he goes out to DJ retreats and Ibiza and like mm. obviously tries to, to teach them how to deal with like rejection. So obviously mm. a, a DJ might be the next best thing and then they get dropped. Yeah, so yeah. So he's got to try and teach them and like give them coping mechanisms and stuff. But I went down there with him and helped him out and seeing it was the first festival since COVID. Right. So it was like everyone was just off the, their nuts. The, the, the thing as well that a lot of people don't realise is COVID affected everybody completely differently. Yeah, yeah. So some people that were sat at home thinking, oh, well, I'm getting paid to sit at home. Yeah. But then there was others where you'd lost your job. Yeah. So you, couldn't getting the just, grant. so you couldn't just sit at home yeah. or you were self-employed and you had to wait longer to get any I, money. I had a or, thing when, I, when that whole COVID thing, being a plumber, we were classed as um, essential. essential workers. Right. So we could go out. So screw fix were open, plumbing merchants were open. If you was a, a tiler and your tiler had fallen off, whatever, it's not a thing. Plumbers, if you got water coming through your scene, yeah, class essential. So we were going out all through, I think I had a, a week or two weeks off at, off at the start of COVID, work through the whole lot. But you'd go to someone's house and they'd let you in and the conversation, you had to, I had to really listen because it would be, How's co how are you finding COVID? I'd go, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm getting through it because they might have gone, oh, I've lost my job, I've lost mm. everything, I'm on my ass. Or Someone's they might died. go, I'm being furloughed and living I'm, I'm, I'm living the dream. Mm. So you'd go into that, that house and you wouldn't know which way to play it until yeah, they've the said. The situation, yeah. And they'll say, how are you doing? And we'll go, well, fucking stop, mate. Yeah, massively, yeah, I was yeah. massively busy through COVID. But you don't want to go into a house where, like you say, yeah. someone's lost someone or they've lost yeah. the job. So you yeah, have I'm to sound, play, play. mate. I'm absolutely yeah. never been busier. Living the dream, yeah. mate. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was a weird thing. I think, it, like you said, it was tough for everyone and everyone got affected in different ways and stuff. And for me, it was like, literally just oh what do i do i felt like i was on holiday to be fair because i was i was working still but obviously the numbers weren't coming through and stuff and i was just like nine o'clock oh, i'm just gonna crack a beer some was the weather right. was good at one point wasn't right, it good. Like, yeah. the first four weeks i remember yeah. it was like well i was sat outside in a put up gazebo with my laptop on my lap just drinking yeah. mm. and then before i know it like i got to the point where i was going oh i'm pissed sat on the sofa but i need some more drink mm. and i'd be raiding the cupboards There'd be like bottles of wine. There'd be like stuff that no one wanted to touch, and I'd just like. Oh, you got that yeah. bad then? Quant nah, it was bad. Quantro. 
That's normally yeah. the one that no one wants, yeah, isn't mate, it? It's in the back of the room. Smashing the quality oh, yeah. shoes for the truffle <laughs> run. <laughs> the M- <laughs> the M- <laughs> would have got that, that point. Oh, the, the MD2020 back oh, in the day. Oh, mate, yeah. Crazy White stuff. lightning. Oh, those are the days. Ladies and gents, just a quick one to say a huge thank you to our new headline sponsor, CT1. The best sealants on the market, voted for by the British public. Not only that, it's made in Britain as well. So go and support a product and a brand that is made in the UK. But I just want to say to you, they've got a brand new product out, which is the BT1. It's a combination sealant and adhesive, like the popular CT1, but it's perfect for keeping a hygienic environment. And it's designed to completely stop the growth of bacteria, microbes, and fungus. And not only that, this stuff is strong. Now it's gonna be available at Travis Perkins, Wicks, Juicens, and pretty much everywhere else. So there's no excuse not to go and give it a go. So we're really happy to be partnering with CT1. So when, so when did you, so did all of this happen during COVID and then you stopped the drink? When did, when did that occur? Yeah, so I stopped the drink when I was down at Boardmasters. So I kind of went down to Boardmasters and, and had this kind of epiphany, basically. Obviously I was dealing with people that were struggling with mental health, young kids taking drugs and seeing the effect that it had on them. And, you know, it, it really kind of opened my eyes a little bit to it, I suppose. And then uh, Ian, who's the guy at We Are Hummingbird, like stood to me and talked to me for a good hour just about like how he how he kind of got through it and stuff and he was like a big like wall street banker so he's like an insurance broker down in um canary wharf and the way he told me the story was basically the wolf of wall street in his oh, they, office they're all, yeah. on the, they're all on the yeah mate they're all on the gear, aren't they? yeah. so he used to say they get in at like eight nine o'clock in the morning and, and not if leave was, till 11 yeah 11 no if midnight. you were still in the office mm. after 12 o'clock in the afternoon like you had to work. He said right. they'd go at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon, they'd go to the pub. So whether they're taking clients or they're all just going or whatever, he said, you know, it was literally Wolf of Wall Street, bugle on the desk, go to the pub, blah, 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 oh, blah. Yeah. yeah, like mad. And he said he was on a, on a flight once and just had a mad panic attack, had no idea what was going on. It was anxiety. Um, and he was telling me his story and his journey and I was thinking, this is me, like, obviously, minus the panic attack and stuff. This is, everything you're saying to me is me. Yeah. You know, he, he changed his job. So he, he left that and he went and set up, obviously, like, We Are Hummingbird and started training mental health first aid. So he does, like, Portsmouth Football Club, the Navy, things mm-hmm. like that. And then I was just like, maybe I just need to change my job. Like, maybe it's that simple. Was he like that? Literally like a switch? Mate, honestly, I this cannot is my way tell out, you, like, thing. yeah. I, I don't want to stop you. Oh, his bladder. But Go I've on. Get, I've got a grander bladder. Honestly. I've got a piece. I didn't want to stop it. <laughs> you, know here, done it you know when they No, 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 no. I didn't want to stop it here because I was like... He should have just crept off. Stu- the story's get, no, he's getting yeah. good. I told you I was a salesman. Yeah. You should have got your fucking bladder done when you had your teeth done. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to the point yes. where you decided you were going to change your job. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. It. Yeah, the epiphany. The, the epiphany. The Newquay epiphany. And Boardmasters in Newquay, amazing festival. Um, so anyway, we're having this chat with him and then I was just like, literally just clicked and I was like, I'm doing something wrong here. I need to change what I'm doing, like change my habits and stuff. And I, Maverick Sabre has always been a really like oh, yeah, favourite yeah. artist of mine and he was at Boardmasters and he performs a song called I Need, I don't know if you know it, but literally, so I went to go and watch him live. So we got to like go and have a venture around like in between doing what we were doing and I watched him perform live on the Sunday Mate, I was flooded with tears and I would just watch them. I was just like, every single lyric hit me like really, really hard. And I just went, that's it, done, done with drink. I need to stop drinking. Obviously there was other things that were happening in the background, like obviously like being a crap family man and all that kind of stuff. But like I, for some reason, this just something just clicked in my head and I just went, that's it. And I've never touched a drop of alcohol since. I'd like to get to the point where I can go, yeah, look, I'll have one. But I just think, although I'd like to be able to have a social drink, like you saying now, like, do you want a beer? I'd love to be able to go, yeah. But that little something in the back of my mind's going. But the thing, the thing if... I always look at it and think you'd like to, but actually, is your life better without it? And 100%, if it, and if, and if yeah. it is, it doesn't really matter. Without a shadow of a doubt, like exercise for me, like I said, is my medicine, and like you know, going out on a Friday night. I like going to the gym on a Saturday morning. Mm. Like, so I go to right, the gym. If you go and have a skin full of that, you can't go to the no, gym. No, it's so. pointless, mate. And I, obviously, like from a calorie point of view and all that kind of boring stuff. But when I stopped drinking, I lost a stone. 
in like the space of a month. Mm. Obviously then started substituting it with food, so I became a fat fucker. That's yeah. why I go to the gym now. But yeah, like it just, it changed my life. It literally flipped my life around. And I, I get people now often like ask me advice and things and like, you know, do you think I've got a bad relationship with alcohol? And I'm saying, well, look, only you know that. Like I can't tell you whether you've got a bad relationship with alcohol, but for me... I, th I think the, pro the reason people probably ask you is if people are drinking every day, but they're only having two beers, yeah, yeah. they probably think that's normal. But two, actually, yeah, that two could beers be every that, day. But that could be the start of, well, actually... When was the last time you actually went for an extended mm, period yeah. without even just having one? Mm. For me, Friday nights, I, I, I never used to drink through the week. Mm. Friday night Did was you used to drink night. at home? No. Never. So I, I never drink at home. Oh, you know, some people I, are like, oh, come on, on a Thursday. There's always got to be a carling in the, the fridge the, or whatever. Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. No, time no. I will ever drink at home is, say, if I've come back from the podcast, for example, weather's really banging. Mrs. is in the garden mm. and she says, would you like a glass of wine or something like yeah. that? But apart from that, I yeah, never... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the reason being is I don't want the... I don't want to sit at home and drink. It's yeah. more of a social yeah. thing. I have to go yeah. out and have a conversation with someone. Yeah. And like you say, the next day, I hate I hate being... Yeah. Hungover. Do you know what, mate? Do you, I, bet, oh, I bet you don't miss like, that. Nah. And do you know what, like, things like, you know, going to the installer and I've seen people, like, hanging out yeah. their ass. <laughs> And they were all like, you're going home tonight and you're not going to be hanging. I'm like, yeah, 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 no, yeah. The plumber social, prime example, when you come in, I'm like, nah, not really, I'm all right, blah, 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 blah. Whatever you do, don't end up on a CT1. We, yeah, we, we can thank the sponsor of the show for that. <laughs> CT1. If you want to have banging hangover at install a show, CT1's the one Nicola to go to. Nicola likes her booze, I hear. She, uh, she likes a party. She sponsored the beer buggy, so what more can we say? <laughs> sponsors everything, mate. <laughs> but yeah. So, just going on that, do you still listen to that song? Yeah, yeah. When you're in, when mate, you're feeling shit, or when you're feeling good, or what? Whenever, mate. So I've got it on like on like a lot of playlists that I listen to on Spotify and stuff. It's always in the, the yeah, playlist. Yeah, yeah. And it's just that 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 song. Yeah. If I'm it's in a, good, a, it's a good shit. A, yeah. The different kind of mindset, so I can be really happy and I listen to it. And I'm like, yeah. Wow, this track changed my life. You know, like old Radio One changing tracks. Yeah. That yeah. was it for me. And then other times, if, you're, if, if you're feeling, feeling shit, shit, we listen to I'll, it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It'll pick you up. Yeah, it's just like. Just a magic track for me. Yeah. Magic track. What's your magic track? You got a track? Prodigy Five Star. Really? Yeah. If I was a boxer, I'd be... I, I don't know why I like it, because I, I grew up and had a... Face pretty, like that, Al, you can't be a boxer. No, You're a pretty boy. I, I had a bit of a bad relationship with my stepdad. Right. So he used to slap me about a bit. And that song was like, I think, when that came out, I don't know why, that was the thing where I thought, well, actually, I'm going to fight back here with you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite a... a a violent song, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, a yeah, fiery yeah, yeah. song. That, like that, you say, it's that, a perfect walk on. If, if you had, if you had, like, if you could put a song of the rage that I had, that was it. That was it. I think my my uh, my go to song for so many different things is "Money for Nothing" Dire Straits. I just yeah, love the, the the length of the intro. The build it builds and builds and builds, and then it's just. And I'm not a massive rock heavy metal yeah, yeah, rock yeah. rock. Fan. I'm a big like old school hip hop fan, but that. That money for nothing, the intro, you know, the two or three minute intro into it. Just see, mine, Dire Straits, brings back completely different memories for me. For the, with, what, with the same song? No, or just no, Dire so, Straits generally? Um, the one where they've got the mad guitar solo. I never Brother No, no uh, Sultan's a Swing. Sultan's a Swing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So my stepdad, obviously, being an alcoholic, yeah. that brings back memories of going to France on the ferry, listening to Dire Straits, and that song, like, I can just repeat it in my right, head okay. of, be, of him at his stage of alcoholism. Does that put you in? It, 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 a song you don't like listening to? No, then. no. I re like my stepdad. The way he used to show his emotion was playing music to me. Okay. So like we used to sit down and listen to vinyl. Yeah. I'm not that old. Um, it's and coming used, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he used to sit down and like he'd never talk about his emotions or anything like that. But he'd sit you down and he'd play vinyl to you. Like so that's probably his way of showing you the emotion. Wasn't it? it was, mate. Especially yeah. Me and that him song. Used to sit down and cry together listening yeah. to music and that. He'd, he'd be like, you know, this is what. You know, father and son. Is it Cat Stevens? Yeah, like yeah. that. That track, like, is 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 mad for me as a childhood memory. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's it's having a different escape for me now. Like, I would, I, you know, if I'm having a bad day, I won't turn to booze now. I'll go to the gym, or I'll go for a run, or like I listen to music yeah. or whatever, or go and spend time with the family, or you know, the different things now that I put in place to help me cope. Mm. Um, but it was. I, it was bad. He got that bad and nearly committed suicide. Oh, really? Mm. And that was. You was told that me you'd get me to cry. 
I'm almost there. Was that the, the transition period then from the Nuki thing so, to... New, so the, the almost committing suicide was before Nuki. Right. So, w- was that part of the reason for going to Nuki then? Yeah, pretty much because the whole mental health thing. So mental health something that's really close to my heart, obviously, with what I've been through, but also what I see others struggle with. Um, and, and what, what was the, the lead into that then? The drink, mate, I think. Is that what it was? Yeah, w- think, was it guilt, the guilt side of it? or I think it was a lot, to be honest. I think it was the whole, like, the, the father thing. So I've got a lot of past trauma from both. I don't I don't call him my dad, but I will for this all sake of purposes. My dad, then my stepdad. Um, and I think a lot of that, like, gets on top of me on a daily you never basis. Talk, you never talk about it growing up. Because even, even me, with the stepdad, like, I... I buried yeah, that, yeah. but I ended up having a really turbulent relationship with my mum because right. of it. Because I couldn't understand, and especially now after having kids, that if somebody put their hands on my kids, yeah, yeah, you'd be yeah. gone. I, yeah. Like they would, you know, I'd be in prison. Yeah, mm. and I could never understand why my mum allowed it. And it wasn't until I got older and I realised that she was Control, controlled by yeah, a narcissist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even still, I found it very hard to forgive her because I never, I never really talked about. It. I just buried it, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Like Firestarter, like I hear that song mm. and like the rage, like that song yeah. goes up. Like, mm, you know, pumped and ready to go. You'd yeah. have to, you'd have to tranquilize me to put me, put yeah, me down. Yeah. I think it's that, you know, like again, it's that association, isn't it? Like with music, as it is with drugs for some people, alcohol. I mean, I say mm. drugs and alcohol. Alcohol is a drug. I think personally, the most yeah. deadly one, but. You know, like you said, it's you can go in and buy a bottle of beer. You can't go in and buy a bottle of heroin, mm. a bottle of heroin, a needle of heroin or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mark thinks it's legal. Now. No, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, going yeah. in. The context, put it in. He's Alex. into one. <laughs> he's already <laughs> googling. He's into heroin one. He's into one stop. Excuse me, have you got any of that Afghan heroin, please? That brown stuff. Yeah. Oh God. So yes, yeah, so that was that was obviously a, a, a tough time. Mm. So you've done your epiphany, Nuki, and then yeah. you've gone right. I want a complete change. Yeah. So training it, to be a sparky. It's, it's, it's a little bit different from food. So is that where you went first, training to be a sparky? Yeah, so I trained to be a sparky and um, I kind of got like, I was passing the assessments. Crap in it. Crap yeah, in it. it's crap, mate. Yeah, yeah. Much rather <laughs> Bundy, and, crap, Bundy and Ryan will be after me now. <laughs> so I was like passing the assessments and stuff. So I did like the online one basically and then where you go and do a practical at the end of the assessments, like the block of assessments. And I was going through it and I just thought, I don't think this is me. Didn't fire like, you up. Yeah, not at all, man. Like I was I was kind of really looking forward to it. And then as the more I got in depth of it, the more I thought, nah. And we'd had an extension on the house and the screeder that had come to do the extension on the house, basically two installs went wrong, didn't go off. Then it started cracking on the second install. So that had to be ripped up twice right. and reinstalled the third time. Anyway, he then, he was like, oh, I want to take you for a beer. But I was drinking at the time. This was obviously before this kicked off. I was drinking at the time and he took me for a beer and he was like, I'm really sorry, blah, 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 blah. He said, like, obviously I was signed off work sick at the time because the drinking was a problem and that and, and I didn't realise. Um, he said, like, I've got a couple of days if you want to come and do a couple of days with me, like, obviously. So I went and gave him a hand for a couple of days. That then turned into full-time work then. Right. Um, and then, so at the time, obviously then I wasn't drinking when it turned into the full-time job and... Yeah, just I literally just fell into screed without. Like, so you work. How long was you working with him for then? So I was working with him for about a year, maybe just over. But I basically started like not running the company, but I took on a lot more responsibility. So he would go away on holiday, and then I'd be doing the installs. Like, and you'd never the done never done it before. Never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's. he's- give you a bit of a crash course in it then basically, yeah. Like we said, mate, it's not hard. Yeah, I think the I think the the hard thing with my industry is that a bit like every industry but like taking pride in what you do like i do if i can't do a job to the best of my ability i'll just walk away from it right um but he taught me obviously and then i've just tweaked things like better working practices that i've learned from Mm. doing different jobs and i think that's the thing with me is you know like i've done working for somebody then i've been self-employed then i've done working for somebody again and i've been employed and then the sales background the food background like the obviously having a shop like dealing with people on a daily basis and like learning that kind of skill set the sales background of being able to upsell and like market different products when they come into the marketplace and i think you know whilst i look back and go like i was a, i had a massive like hang up basically thinking all oh, my sisters are successes and like i'm just this piece of shit what, basically what do they do? Like, so one works for national grid she's like a big recruitment 
I don't know what you want to call her. She's like in recruitment for National Grid. One runs a massive charity, her own charity right, down in okay. London. And then one's a sailing instructor and like she does bits and bobs of music. Well, and, and you stuff. was like comparing yourself to what yeah, they've yeah, got yeah. And, uh, and achieved. Yeah, yeah. And my dad was a lorry driver. Right. My stepdad was a farrier. He had a really good job, like shoeing horses. Um, not going shoe, shoe, but actually putting <laughs> shoes on horses. That joke. Um, and I was kind of always like, the teachers are right. I'm never going to make it. Like I failed at the shop. I failed doing this. And so how, how old was you when you when you started the screening thing? Uh, so I've been doing it now on my own for two years and a year with him. So three years ago. So how old are you? Thirty seven. So it's quite late. You know when people say, oh, I don't know what to do. My my life's going. I'm still, you know, I'm mid thirties. I don't know what there, to do. There must, there must be in this like. This isn't anything negative on you. There must be so many people in a similar situation mm. where yeah, they don't know what they want to do. Groundhog Day, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and the, and the the issue is, is society's inbuilt it that if you get to a certain age and you still don't know what you want to do, or you feel like you're in a dead end, mm. yeah. and you start comparing yourself to yeah. other people, you know, you might be going home having a drink, and you think, oh, I'm useless. I can't do anything. Mm. And I don't know that, what I want, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then that snowballs into where you've yeah. suddenly well, and, you have got a a big problem that you've got to deal with. Social media as well, I think, has got a lot to answer for. I think it's great, isn't it? Let's be honest. Like, it's a wicked platform to advertise your business and do things like this and meet new people and stuff. But I think, you know, let's face it, a lot of these you people You only ever on see the good, the, good, the good stuff. Yeah. 100%, mate. No yeah. one ever is like, hey, I'm having a row with the missus. Like, get this <laughs> on my story. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You don't see that. Yeah. Like, no one wants to see that, like... You know, I'm in Marbella living the best life. Like, I'm going to be in fucking balls deep in debt when I get back. But yeah, yeah. everyone's seen me on Instagram, so it's great. Yeah. And I think a lot of that is like, and I, and I definitely fell into that trap. Like, I was, what I, again, Ian at Hummingbird told me this. He said, you've got Instagram life and you've got real life. And he's, and, 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 but and even, again, even like, when you've got kids, because sometimes like I sit there and I, I feel like I want more. I need, mm. to, need to be doing more. I should be doing more. And then actually I step back and I go, I've got a roof over my head. I've got three kids, really nice wife. Mm. I actually, I should, I should be, hundred percent super mate. content. I think yeah. that we all like, we're all hungry, aren't we? We are. Anyone that wants to be successful, like you know, it's the old saying, isn't it? The lion isn't the king of the jungle because he's the biggest and strongest. He's yeah. the king of the jungle because he's always hungry, man. Yeah. And I think that, like for me, like I always want to better myself. Whatever mm. I'm doing, I want to be the best. Mm. And I think I'll do whatever it takes within, you know, within reason to get there. Um, so yeah, I think you know it's it, it's a tough one, isn't it? I think, but social media for me is like it's like a double edged sword. Yeah, you, you've got to be really careful not. with it. I think. Yeah, because I think, it, it, like, like you say, it's brilliant, but it can be a cruel it, mistress. It, it, oh yeah, it can turn on you. I think. Yeah, and, and like I said, I was living that Instagram life of putting pictures at like a, a company car for fuck's sake. Like mm. it's not look my, at my car. Astra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My Ford Focus. Like, Imagine this. Look at my Tesla. Imagine, look at me Tesla. <laughs> so a guy does that. Nobody ever puts that. <laughs> I've noticed. <laughs> um, but, oh, you know, like, I'd get, like, I got a Mercedes A-Class and yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, like, look at this car. Yeah. Like, bro, a new whip, this, that, and the other. And I remember, like, this cringiest photo I've are they, got. Are they um, still on or have you took them off? No. <laughs> <laughs> the cringiest photo. They're definitely gone, mate, 100%. That account has gone. Um, but the cringiest photo I've got, so I work with a, a mate of mine who's got a clothing brand that supports mental health and we'd, we'd done some new garments and stuff and he was like, let's take some pictures. And Model. Was, Modeling. Modeling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baraclavas. And um, <laughs> basically I stood with, a, with one leg up and one leg on the floor with a Canada Goose jacket on and a, a cap of his and a jumper of his getting the logo in with my face down like this. Yes, my and guy. I, mate, I look back and just think, my, what a My G. <laughs> Literally. Man's going shot in after Say this. nothing, fam. <laughs> Say nothing. Man's got to get the peas. <laughs> but I look back now. Yeah, where's Luke? <laughs> and I look back and I just think, what a dick. Like, I can't believe I was ever like... Because what I was trying to do was portray an image that wasn't me. Not you. But, yeah, like, yeah. I wanted people... Like, I wanted people to go, you know that dickhead from school that was never going to amount to anything? Look at him, he's wearing a Canada yeah, Goose yeah. on an A-class Merc. Like, that's yeah. what I wanted. The, the, yeah. the, the, the issue with that is, actually, no one really cares. Ah. No, no one's... Because everyone's so consumed with themselves. Yeah. 90% yeah. of the time. Exactly Nobody, that. You know, but you in your head have convinced yourself. Yeah, yeah. you're right, though. Yeah, mm. you like you say, you want to be something that you're not, so you're mm. portraying that. Through your fucking phone. Exactly, mate. And I think alcohol had a lot to do with that as well. Because like, Was you modelling when you was drinking then? Yeah, you had a bottle of spice from that. <laughs> with my Canada Goose. 
are you wasting time? I think that some of you probably are, and I have a solution for you. So nobody wants to do any type of admin. Now, I have a solution for you, and it is called Tradeify. It's a fully automated job scheduling, invoicing, and quoting all in one place. Now, that software is going to save you 12 hours a week and all by using a simple software solution. Now, you can try it for two weeks, absolutely free, no cards needed, and you'll even get support in person from Tradeify themselves. Now, when you're done, you can always come back to me and thank me, but just enjoy the extra 12 hours that you're going to gain from just using the software. So, you started your business? Yes. How have you found that? I take it you, you. Oh no, you had run your business before. So, no, so running your screening business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it completely different to the sh little shop you had? It is and it isn't. Like obviously, I still deal with people on a daily basis, which is what I love. I'm a people's person. Like hence why I did quite well in sales. To be fair, like I love talking to people. Yeah. Um, I think the, the experience that the shop gave me in regards to like, you know, like accountancy and thing like just daily chores yeah. that you've got to do running a business and stuff social media was never about really when i had the okay. when i had the shop so now that's come on leaps and bounds and stuff it's kind of like it was coming in but was never really like the platform that it is now so, so, so you've gone into that the, the new business sort of half running then because you know yeah, where your yeah, accountancy yeah, yeah. was how to run a business yeah, yeah yeah but i was i was young like i was 21 when i opened the shop right so i was like fuck i'm still a kid do you know what i mean but obviously then that matured me a little bit. But now I think obviously I do things a lot different now to what I did then. So I've learned lessons that I, I didn't do particularly well in the shop that I now do better. Yeah. Um, so, but I'd already ran in effect the, the, a screening company before I started doing what oh, I was yeah, doing. Yeah, so that kind of helped as well. Um, but that, that's a weird story. So like I said to him, listen, I, I need to earn more money. I'm a labourer. Like I was earning 120 quid a day. How long had you been with him? Um, so I kind of was started running the gaff a little bit, like six months in. Okay. Um, and and I was just like, mate, I need I need a bit more dough. Like obviously I'm doing more hours. I'm like taking on more responsibility when you're away on holiday. Blah 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 blah. And he was like, I can't afford to pay you anymore. I said, right, okay. Well, how about I, I invest and I'll buy another pump so we can have two pumps on the road and you know we'll really make it go. Don't want the stress. Right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to start doing. I, ne I, see, I, I never I never understand that because if you've got somebody that works One, well for you yeah, and he wants and to you, invest and in you, and you could step back hey. a little bit from the business or you could grow and have double yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. the share I always think yeah. some and he, people and he was are having none of it like, nah yeah not, like he was just like nah I said like okay well so I was thinking about it what can I do like obviously I've got no opportunity to earn any more money so I need to think of something so I said to him, right, listen, I need to take you for a drink. So I took him out for a drink. Obviously, again? not an alcoholic. Again, yeah, but again, mate, that's the same thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 100%. Like, I'll take you for a coffee. It's, it's always yeah, take you for a drink. definitely, mate. Yeah. So I sat him down and I was like, listen, obviously I need to earn more money. We've had this conversation. You're evidently not going to pay me any more money. You don't want me to invest in the company. Um, I need to start doing some of my own work and stuff. I said, so I'm going to get some business cards produced. I'm going to start like dipping them around here and there. I'm not going to come after your customers. Yeah. You know, I know your builders. I'm not going to go after them. But if anybody approaches me, then I'm going to go for it. And likewise, if I see a, a new builder that you're not dealing with, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, fair shout. And he was like, yeah, yeah, sound. Do what you got to do, blah, 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 blah. Like a bit piss takey. Right. Like, trying to like Didn't make think it feel small and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then he really started taking the piss then at work. And well, I say then, that like that day he was taking the piss at work. Like, oh, fucking you heard what he's going to be doing. Blah, 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 oh, and really? All that kind of stuff. Anyway, so like I finished work on the Friday and that was it. And then on the Saturday, I got a text message. Been having a long hard think about it. Don't come back to work on Monday. No. I was like, I'm not saying I don't want to work for you. I'm just saying I need an avenue to earn more money. Like, I've got a mortgage to pay. You, you're not going to offer him, blah, 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 you know what he, I mean? He obviously thought you were going to come after his business. Yeah, which I just... get. Like, I've, mate, I've been, now I've run my own business, I get it. I've had that happen to me. But, like, at the point, I was just like, I've, I've, I've had the decent thing to come and approach you to tell you what I'm going to do yeah. and tell you that I'm not approaching people. Like, and the funny thing is when he used to do, he did the same, so he worked for somebody and left to set up his own thing. But he sent a text message off the work phone that he had saying, going on my own, shouldn't mention any names, going on my own. <laughs> we'll overdub that with yeah, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm 
<laughs> I am. <laughs> um, sent a text message out to all the customers on the work phone saying, I'm going on my own, get in contact for your screeds, blah, 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 blah. Real so snake. I think in Real the back snakes. of his mind, he's probably thinking, this little yeah. fuck is going to be doing this to me. But I'm not like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, and it's just not the way I'm geared up. So anyway, like, don't come back to work on Monday. Then I'm thinking, fuck. I know this is an expensive game to set up. I've got to buy a pump. I've got to buy a van. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Like, uh, am I going to be able to do it on my own? Because you need another pair of hands to be able to do it, really. So all this kind of panic's going from my mind. And I'm thinking, like, fucking broke. For yeah. a start. We've got some savings that we've put in by, like, to hopefully invest in that later on. And and then I was just like, fucking hell, like, what am I going to do? Um, so I started doing some figures and some calculations, ADHD kicking in. Mm. Like, blah, 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 like tightening it all up and I was like right I've got I've got to find 45 grand Shit. to set up this business hmm. and I ain't got 45 grand <laughs> yeah basically like that so I was just like right okay so I started like making some phone calls and stuff rang someone up who I know was a screeder right can I just pump hire for, uh, for a bit just to get me going like I'll pay you whatever you want for it per hire and I was just going to put it on the job which I did did that for a bit obviously had a van already anyway which was like his, so I bought the van off him. Okay. And uh, just sort of said to him, listen, you're going to have to give me some like leeway for time for this because I've got to earn a bit of money to be able to stump up the cash for the van and blah, 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 blah. So how how was he? He was like, no, 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 I know you've got savings because you told me you were going to buy a pump and blah, blah. I said, yeah, but I'm now unemployed, you dickhead. Yeah. Like, how am I, how mm. am I supposed to pay you when I've got no money? Yeah. Like, that money's now got to go on. Food. I don't know how long I'm going to be out of work for. Do you mm. know what I mean? So, yeah, then, like, started putting things into process, like, stripped all his labels off the van. My mate does sign writing, so he relogoed all my van up and that. And then just started pumping it on social media, basically. Um, you know, was getting a, a few jobs in here and there. And this was, like, November time. And then December, I landed my biggest job to, like, not yet, not obviously now, but at the time. Yeah. Uh, four massive barn conversions, underfloor heating and liquid screed throughout. And does that come from social media? Yeah, yeah. So it goes to show and it's free. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I went out to go and see the job, surveyed it. Guy loved me. Yep, sound. When can you do it? Send me the price over. And obviously, as long as the price is good, we'll get you in. Did that. And that was like a big flagship one for me because it was like I've gone from doing like little bits and bobs here and there, trying to get that like real wow factor on, on socials did this barn and then it just went boom. And like, I was mad busy. And I've, I haven't had a day with no work since. Did Steve see it on social media? Yeah, and he started going, why are you putting pictures of my work up? I was no. like, mate, it's not your work. Like, I'm not, why am I gonna advertise your business, you fool? Yeah. Started like doing like, obviously my own pictures, like, no, 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 that's mine. It's got my underfloor heating pipe in it. I was like, I use the same supply, you clown. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, obviously then it's just snowballed and snowballed. And like like everyone, we've had our quiet times and I've kind of gone like January and February this year was really quiet for us. I say really quiet, I was still doing a job a day. Yeah. But I was kind of like, I'd gone from doing three, four jobs a day to one a day and I'm thinking, fucking okay, no, hell, like, am I going to have to lay? I had two lads at the time. I was like, I'm going to have to lay one of these off or start putting them one on Flexi. Well, if I put one on Flexi, I've got to put the other one on Flexi because it's not fair and this, that, and I was really panicking. And then um, it just kicked off again. And, and like, I'm the touch wood, I'm the busiest I've ever been at the minute. Like, oh, good. for screeders, underfloor heaters, we're normally like two to three weeks in advance because the builder's like, all right, mate, yeah, any chance you can get some screening for us tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course I can, mate. So it was, it's always like kind of really like twitchy ass time because you're thinking, I've got nothing in next week. So I was just mm -hmm. saying to your man outside, like, yesterday, I could have had nothing in for next week. And then today, I'll be full for two weeks. Yeah. At the minute, I'm like, I'm booked up through August. I think the, my earliest available is the 27th of August, just in case anybody wants any screen on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I find that, though, it is like feast or famine, isn't it? Yeah. Like they have everything, then goes quiet, and you think, sometimes that's, you go, that's right. That's because you're on holiday, Mark. <laughs> I'm going away next week, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't do the show next week, I'm going away. Are you actually going away? Yeah, I'm going to... Um, Turkey. I was waiting for Zanti. Zanti. Uh, waiting look at go. me. Mark. Look at Jack and Jack Towns. It reminds me where I'm going. Going to Zanti. He's like your nice. PA, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is feast or famine. Yeah. And when it's famine, it's like, Shit. because, you know, like a builder will take a project on and they know they've got that project for like 12 months or whatever, for instance. For me, like I'll take a project on and it's a day's work, mm. two days work max, yeah. really. 
Yeah. And I, I, like we got approached by a big firm the other week um, and it was a, a, a big project or what I'd class as a big project. It's like 500 square metres, ground floor install, first floor install, acoustic floor, like the lot where they nice. were having everything. But it was going to be a good, like, I don't know, two weeks worth of work for me. I was sat there scratching my head thinking, oh, I've got to put a price in for it. I don't want to overprice, but I don't want to underprice. Whilst I'm on that job for two weeks solid, I'm going to lose Tom, Dick and Harry that come to me every week for a little cube or two. They have loads of work, don't they, like Tom, Dick and Harry? I'm, yeah, mate. You always honestly, do bits for them. Joe Roggs is another one. He's mate, always busy. Good payer, Joe, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm then fly, stressed down my nut then thinking, like, I'm, I'm, I'm having to go to suppliers because I don't normally install acoustic flooring or, you know, robust detail, as they call it. And I'm like, oh, am I going to get the best price because I don't buy it all the yeah. time? And all that, all that's then coming into the mix. And I'm like... Do you know what, is it worth me being this stressed about a project that I've never worked for these builders before? It, you know, it potentially, I don't know how they work or their payment terms, so I've got to yeah. then try and find all that out. But if it's 60-day payment terms, then all of a sudden I'm my cash flow's screwed. Then I've been letting them and Joe Bloggs and Tom Dick and Harry down <laughs> whilst I've been doing the project, and they're then gone and found got to find someone, someone else, else. Yeah, find someone else that might do it, you know, a, a, as good an install as me. And then it's like, I've lost all those guys and those guys aren't going to use me again now for another 12 months. So now I'm screwed, basically. So it's all about trying to find that balance, yeah. isn't it, I think. But, you know, we're getting big pro bigger projects come in. We're tendering for a massive one down in London, seven floors in St. John's oh, nice. Wood, full install. Like, it, it, it'll be mad if we get it. But again, it's like that, do I, do I want to be down? I'm going to be down there for like, it's going to be a good weaker floor because it's a huge but it's project. working in london it's completely different game isn't it mm. you know yeah. you, you, you always I was, I was waiting for you to go parking, <laughs> you parking. I knew it was parking. Coming. Yeah, everyone right. i've <laughs> spoke to like i spoke to um todd glister plumber down in yeah, london yeah, yeah. and he said he loves uh, a parking ticket uh, yeah, but i said to him i went how do you do it he went it's a nightmare you've got to get in at five in the morning load the job out go and park half a mile away yeah. so then walk back to the job if you need anything out the van it's half an hour there yeah, and back. Man. If you've got to go off and get something, luckily in London they have the, for our trade, people yeah, will come and deliver. Right. But for you it's... Oh mate, it's we had it the other week, I did one down in St John's Wood again and it was like a, a Sainsbury's they were changing into something and we like organised everything like clockwork, sc the screed wagon turns up so I've got to set my pump up on the pavement because obviously I can't put it in the road, then the traffic wardens come round, oh you can't set that up there mate. I'm like, can't park there mate. Yeah, literally. <laughs> like, I'm like, where do you want me to put it, mate? And yeah. he was like, oh, you just can't do it there. I said, well, I've got a job to do. I've done health and safety. I've put cones down there, like a high-vis barrier there and there. Like I'm making people aware. I've got a man stood there and a man stood there redirecting the foot traffic. And then, obviously, then the wagon comes. Oh, my God, did all Carnage. the hell break loose. Carnage. Ah, oh, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. I was like, mate, I've, how do you think houses are built? Yeah. Like, what? how do you think it all got here? And anyway, it's just been like, ripped me out a ticket, then ripped me out a ticket for my van that was parked across the road. I was just like, oh, do you know what? Whatever, man. Just sit on the but ticket. People say that work down in London, they factor in parking yeah. tickets yeah. now. Because mm -hmm. they go like, I know I'm going to get a parking ticket. If I'm down there for three days, there's three parking tickets that I've got to go on that job. Yeah. Very important yeah. parking VIP. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah I've yeah, seen yeah. Um, that there's them, them shots on YouTube of, you know, the Ferraris and, and you know, proper cars are, Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Not like, Tesla, no? Not Teslas. Oh. Round like Harrods, and they say parking is 40 quid a day, a ticket 60 quid a day or yeah. 80 quid a day. Yeah, yeah. To them, that's their parking ticket. They'll park wherever they like. Mm. If I'm paying Take 80 quid, ticket. that's my parking ticket. Mm. And I can park wherever I like. Yeah, yeah. So, so should we uh, ask him future, future plans and then go yeah. to like a final, yeah. final thought? So yeah. future plans yeah. for for the business obviously you've been through a bit of turbulence you've yeah. come out the other side what would you like to achieve or where do you see you personally mm -hmm. and the business going in the in the future or like just life in general what yeah, do you yeah. what what do you see for yourself then going forward so we're always looking to try and grow as a business anyway even from like when we first started in the first six months and that how can we make things better streamline things make things more practical and stuff obviously i'd like to grow my social media platform and stuff and then look at branching out. So I've I've recently looked into doing resin bound driveways, pathways and patios. Mm. So I'm going to look into branching out to that. But obviously, whilst I'm doing what I'm doing at the minute, I'm so busy, I can't. 
So it is about just like trying to spend my time. Time wisely. management, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like times, times the one thing that we none of us get enough of. I think has been self-employed people, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of the, the business aspect. I don't want to grow the, what I'm doing at the moment because it works well, and I do think if I had another team of guys on the road, it's a double the amount of work I've got to find. You do hear a lot of people when they when they sort of grow to. Too seven quick. or eight yeah. people mm. it then swallows them up with the stress of lot, keeping them yeah, going a lot yeah. of people grow too quick though yeah they mm. don't do it they don't stretch themselves and then yeah. go right i'll bring one person in there to ease that up and then stretch yeah. again and then mm. it's i'll bring two in and then all of a sudden it's like well this is getting out of hand now it's when you tender for that massive you know that massive job i've got to get six guys in yeah then yeah. when that's done you do your six guys exactly that mate and obviously then like trying to bring them in on a casual basis is like are they going to be doing the standard of work that I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. And that's the big thing for me is like, I pride myself. I will not leave a job until it is bang on. Like, I, I heard something the other day. If you own your company, you give 100%. Mm. Anyone who works for you, will the maximum they'll give you across the board will give you 80%. Mm. So what are you, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Jack's like, like, Jack went on 20% yesterday. No, Jack, Jack's like uh, 18 <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's finding that person is, that mate. wants to push and I've got same as Billy. you like Billy's like, you? mate he's phenomenal he turns up for work 10 minutes every day early like he treats everything with respect he's wonderful with the customers he's well mannered big up Billy like, yeah. mate, honestly ma like massive how, how did you him. get him then is, is he someone you, you knew yeah yeah so I used to be in sales with his dad Oh, okay. And he was a postman, Billy was. Right. He used to work the post and, and his dad rang me. He was like, oh, I know you're looking for someone and like, can I bring him around to have a chat and this, that and the other and came around and had a chat and like straight away, you know, you just think, yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got it. He's got something. Like, I know he's got something. He's got your bills for your fucking... Yeah. There you go, mate. What are you here? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> And like I look after my lads, like I so anyone that comes to work for me, they get bonuses if we have good performance at the end of a week. So if, we, if I've had a good week, they've had a good week, basically. Yeah. So I like to do it. And then on a Friday, I tend to try and just do one job and go right. You get home, have a full day's pay, and go and enjoy your weekend. Yeah. And like he knows that and he respects that. Like do you know what I mean. So it's for me, it's having someone in there. Like he's basically a younger me, as yeah. I was when I was his age. He's giving me the same as what I was giving to someone else. So that's massive for me. And I know then I can, I can leave him on a job and know mm. if there's a labourer with him. He's going to get it done. He's going to go, no, 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 no. That's not how we do it, mate. This is how we do it, but not in an arsey way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want someone that's going to be able to like be, be good with training someone. And I've got that in him, which is massive for a business. I think if you can have someone that you can trust and rely on and know they're going to do the job to the capabilities so that you I, do. And looking too. after him, innit? That's the, yeah, 100%, the key, mate. And like, you know, if he wants to go off and do it on his own, I completely take my hats off to him. I've done it. Good for you. Well done, mate. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Jerry Springer. Final, final thought. We do we do a like little bit where you can either wax lyrical about stuff you want to do, or a bit more about your business, or you can give a bit of advice. Like I think, obviously, the stuff that you've talked about is really important because mm. there could be somebody mm. listening or watching to this yeah, now, yeah. like you say, stood on top of a multi-story or yeah. drowning in the bottle of. Rum, Spice yeah, rum, yeah, 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 whatever it is, and not sort of looking at life in a positive manner. What would you, what would you like to say to the camera? This is like your little time to shine, or whatever you want to talk about. Just, I just think you know what I think. The big thing for me was opening up and talking, and I think you know, as as men especially, it's that stigma that's attached to we don't need to talk. It's all you know, like like I said, it gets on top of you, and it's okay to open up to people and talk about your problems. But one, one thing I was going to say, so if, if, because some people don't have somebody or they don't mm. feel like there's somebody to talk to, is there, is there anybody that you talk to or anybody that you know of that could help any charities or anything like that, that somebody could, yeah, yeah. Cause, if, cause some people haven't got a group of friends or they don't have a, a, a missus or a partner or whatever yeah, yeah. it is like, how would you suggest to somebody to go and. Well, one thing I'll always say, and I know this sounds really cliche, but my DMs are always open to anybody that wants to speak to me, and whether that's on a completely unbiased level or you just want a bit of advice or whatever about how I've dealt with my situation. But there's also, like, obviously Samaritans, there's Mind, there's so many charities out there that can help you. I just think that take that first step, you know, and I know it's difficult. I know sometimes you don't want to because you've been seen as a failure or whatever, but it, honestly, it gets better. The more you talk about your issues, the easier it gets. And I just think to get that weight lifted off your shoulder. I was one of those people that was the life and soul of the party. And people say like a smile hides a thousand things. And I think it's so true. 
people used to look at me and like when I sort of opened up about how I was dealing with things and what I was doing and what I was going through, people were like, nah, that's not yeah. you. Yeah. Like you're the, the class clown. You're always the life and soul of the party. But deep down I was like in so much pain and hurt. I think that's the thing is just open up and talk about it. And like I said, my DMs are always open for anybody. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, even if it's just an opening chat and just like, you know, I, how are you doing? I always ask people how they're doing twice. Mm. Like, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right. Because it's just a greeting, isn't it, for yeah. English people just go, yeah. all right, mate. You're not actually, I'm not actually asking if they're all right. You're yeah. just saying, mm. you're right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ask them if they're okay. Are you actually okay? Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I yeah. actually think um, like podcasts and sort of social media has actually been a, a good impact on, 100%. you know, like the stuff the Talking Tradesman, yeah. stuff Rob does, yeah. and, you know, Mind Your Head, mm. um, like putting construction charities at the forefront to yeah. show that you can actually get some help. I think it's been like a real good thing for definitely for yeah. the industry. And I think like, you know, things like this golf day, I think, you know, you're, you're kind of taking away, you know, it's not therapy, it, you know, you're not going to see a, a psychiatrist. You're going to enjoy a day with your friends. But I think, you know, I, like that guy down in the tour, he didn't even know, he's never met me before, but he felt okay to open up because yeah. he was probably surrounded with like-minded people that had their tools rubbed and probably been in the same situation that didn't want to speak about it, but he felt comfortable. And I think that's the thing, you know, like we're trying to get people out in sports or whatever it might be to come and join us and say, look, you know, it, you might only want to open up to that one person that's there that you feel comfortable opening up to. You might not want to open up at all, but it might just make you feel that little bit better. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, even for the stuff with, you saw everybody going on that Morven Hills trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For, you know, the guy that's not very well. Yeah. I can't remember what he, Aaron. He's, yeah, Aaron. Yeah. Like even stuff like that, just actually yeah, coming yeah. together with other, that, other that's people. That's the good thing with the social, yeah, we touched on <laughs> socials. It can be a horrible place, but it can be an amazing place as mm. well. And and the team that went to the, the Morven thing, and your thing and, and the whole tool theft thing and yeah. every the, the socials has the power to change people's lives mm. and open doors for people and it, it like you just said there drop you a message yeah, yeah even yeah. if it's just uh, I'm feeling a bit shit 100% mate I've had one off my mate today he's a plasterer oh mate this has gone on the van I've just bought a new house and I need some Joe advice is what he said to right, me right okay it's nice. just like sound like drops him a message back like try and keep your chin up I'm here like obviously if you want to meet up blah 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 blah. and I just think like you know it, it takes five minutes man mm. to send someone a message to see if they're okay do you know what I mean and I know we're all guilty of being busy in life and work and everything else but like you know, I try and touch base with people, especially if I think that like they're they're showing signs of because obviously I was in sales, I read I read people for a living, so I like to think that I can be a good judge of character. Do, and do see you find it easier now to see if people are I do now, yeah. So I went through mental health first aid training, so I do see telltale signs now. Um but sometimes like no one would have been able to read me. Like literally no one would have been able to read me at all. The only telltale sign that I had was I was drinking in excess. Yeah every day that was my telltale sign but people outside didn't see that would never have known mm. never opened up about it i never spoke about it it was just like yeah i'm fine like i'm not a problem and i think that's the thing is now i look back and i think you know what maybe if i'd have opened up that little bit sooner i wouldn't be in that situation that i was in or maybe I, it would have I, taken I, a little bit i always bit think soon. things happen for a reason like you were 100%. supposed to go to that board masters event yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, some, something... Yeah. You like know. I said, your path's chosen for you, I believe. Whether that's you, you want to believe in God or you want to believe in fate or whatever it is, I believe everybody has a path and that whatever's going to happen. Like, you could walk out in front of a bus and get run over tomorrow, you know? Yeah. It's just like, that's meant to. That's meant for you. Yeah. My gramps, who was my absolute hero, used to have loads of sayings, but the one that I reiterate to everybody is what's meant to be won't pass you by. Right. I think that's like a it's a powerful one for me. Now. Well, they good, to, good they, and bad. Well, they used to. Have yeah, yeah. I think if, if some people have real shit things happen to them, don't they? Yeah. Whether it be but that's a, the, an that's accident the, or cancer or whatever, that can build you to become a better person. Hundred percent, mate. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah. And that's Simple. that's one of the reasons why I never like I, I touch wood. I can safely say I've never really. Well, maybe I did when I was younger, and I never realised it. Struggle with my mental health, but mm. my thing was I always used to just. Somebody else would talk and they go, well, my dad's just died and my mum died when I was three and mm -hmm. got put into care or something like that. And I actually just, it puts everything into perspective for me. Because I always think, 
shit, whatever I think I'm dealing with. There's always someone worse. There's always, Someone's always I know, I know when you're in it, yeah, yeah, you yeah. think, oh, this is the worst ever. But then when somebody else talks to it and then you go, actually, like, I've got a lot to be. And yeah, that yeah, always yeah. picks me yeah. up. Because I always Most think, definitely, yeah. man. There's always someone worse off. Always. So, but no, thank you very much for coming on. And Thank uh, you for having me, gents. Yeah. yeah, no, it's been, I enjoyed that. You're the, you're the, the sort of guest that I would um, quite happily have on again. I think there's loads more. Yeah. Loads more uh, stuff. He just wants to make you. you cry, this one. He's yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's like, didn't crash No, you know, when you get someone on, we've had people on before and they've just got loads of really good stories, information, just everything. And you're like, he you wants know, me to come back and talk about my stories in Malia, doesn't he? That's, oh, he mate. That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. you do. You get people on and you're like, they're just brilliant and you could go for hours and hours. But I know. Oh, mate, I could talk for my, days. My, my thing is, is I always admire somebody that's willing to say, I haven't always got it right, yeah. but I've had a good go at it. I'm still trying to have a go at it mm. and hasn't really given up over it because, you know, I'm not saying anybody that decides to take their life or whatever, it's easy because it's not because that's a decision that's been made over a, a multiple months, maybe years, mm. to do something like that. But I always feel like those people that have come out the other side and now they're trying to help other people. I always like, you know, I've got big admiration for that. I think I you're like... lucky, yeah. If you come out the other side, I think you're very lucky because in that place from memory, like from how I was feeling is, mm. you know, people say it's selfish and it's a coward's act and all that kind of stuff, but you're not, in that moment, you do not think about anyone else but yourself. Mm. And realistically speaking, you're thinking that everyone else is better off without you. Mm. That's what I felt in that time. I was like, I don't, I, I don't want to be here because I'm a burden on everyone else. Mm. And that's that generally speaking, that's how people or why people do what they do because they feel like a burden or they feel like the world would be a better place without them in it, which is a really, really sad thing because nine times out of 10, it's not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So boom. It's a good chat. Yeah, man. Good Thank chat. you very much. Appreciate that boys. Nice one.